All right, we are live. Now we're working around a few sound issues, so bear with us. Scott's shutting the door on our end. And, uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about what we're testing here in a moment. Whiskey-wise, you can see the tomato already. But uh, I want to kick it over to uh, it's Thomas Mooneyham, who ha has a relationship with Tomatin. Thomas, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and give us tell us a little bit about uh, about you and your company. Oh, we got he froze uh -oh. up a little bit. Thomas is froze it, up. Anyway, we got we do have the Tomatin fourteen today, which is port cask finished. Um, we we've reviewed this. Thomas is a former bartender, Sorry. and he is also he's going to walk us through his favorite recipe of an old fashioned that uses tomato and fourteen. That and he's correct. back. You're back. All right, Thomas, go ahead and introduce yourself and your company and how you're related to, related to tomato. Oh, happily. Um, again, I just want to apologize for some of the audio issues. If there's a bit of an echo, it's on my end, and that, it's my fault. That, that sounds in, great. That Keep sounds that right. mic that, right yep. up near your mouth. That, that was good. perfect. Right. All right, will do. Um, so uh, my name's Thomas Mooneyham. I work for Phillips Distilling, which is the importer of tomato and scotch. Uh, we also make prairie organic vodka, prairie gin, import a couple of mezcals, some tequila. But we're here to talk about scotch today. So I'm uh, quite excited. Um, I have a little bit with me if you guys are going to be uh, joining me in a dram. We definitely will be. All well, right. Yeah. Well, what we have open is the older bottling of the tomatin. We do have one of the new bottlings here we brought just for show so you could see that it does have new packaging. That's right. And that way you recognize it on the shelf if you see it. They're both functionally the same except for the new packaging. Yeah. And not to rub it in, but we had not, we've never seen the old packaging of the Tomatin 14 here. True. The Tomatin 14 in the new packaging recently showed up in Wichita, Kansas. Hello, that's And what I hate to say about. it, but $47. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not to rub price. it in, but I, I know it's going for $60 to $70 in a lot of parts. That is it. And Thomas, your audio is great. The closer that mic is to your mouth, so you're doing a great job there. So go ahead and. How, what exactly, because uh, we were talking to Tomatin, we've had a couple of their ambassadors on before, and I'm talking to Jennifer from Tomatin, and she links me in with you because their ambassadors couldn't join us, but exactly what is your relationship and, and your company with Tomatin? So I work, um, I started in Chicago uh, as a bartender for about eight or nine years, and then started getting into doing some more brand work, and about a year, year and a half ago, I started talking with Phillips Distilling, to take a position which they call their purveyor position is essentially uh, a brand ambassadorship role. Um, it's a full-time gig, uh, did it in Chicago for a long time, and they just moved me to LA because we got distribution out here in California. So if I appear a bit sweaty, we are in the midst of a pretty intense heat wave right now. Um, so what a better time to drink warm scotch. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, so my role with the company is mainly just education, training, being a person with such a long uh, bartending background, obviously cocktails and cocktail development and recipes are a huge part of my my uh, strong suit. So today I would love to, uh, to definitely talk to you guys about the, the scotch, but then also go over some different scotch cocktails that can be really fun and can be made at home pretty easily too. You bet. Yeah, you teased up with us, and we were we were kicking around even maybe the possibility of mixing up a cocktail live, but we couldn't come up with some of the bitters, and I know you're in the midst of a move, so there was even some issues on your end, so we're going to definitely, I love, and Thomas is going to talk in a little bit about an old-fashioned that uses Tomatin 14, right? Yeah, yeah, really nice one. Uh, kind of a play on the, the classic old-fashioned, which is, you know, not to sound redundant, but one of the most old-fashioned drinks out there. Um, and so we're just going to be adding a little bit of chocolate and, and some cherry bark vanilla bitters and just have a really, really nice, beautiful cocktail that where all the ingredients kind of play off of each other. In a really, really nice way, really easy to make at home too. Beautiful. And what we'll do is uh, Thomas will talk us through it. We won't actually do a mixture, but he's also sent me kind of the ingredients to do it. We'll end up, not today because we're going from show to show to show, but later on, we'll put those, that recipe, with your permission, Thomas, we'll put it up on our website so people can go look at it. Is that all right with you? 
One hundred percent. And um, once I get all of my tools and equipment finally sent over here from Chicago, I'd love to whip one up at home and send a photo to you guys as well, yeah. so that you guys could have something to to compare it to, make I'll sure be, it looks right. So. That'll be great. And just to cover some of our well, first of all, let me go into our patented tested. So we're doing Tomatin fourteen, which is a Scotch. It's got a port finish on it, and we're going to let Scott do it again because I liked it. What are we going to do with it, Scott? We're going to test it. Wow, that's very impressive. Very <laughs> test impressive. it. Test it. All right, now for our coins, we got 327 coming at you, and you're going to have Look what? at this pour. Look what? at this pour. We're supposed to be watching what we're drinking. I gave you the heavier one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you can pour some back or, or hold it, but you got I'm a gonna designated pour driver. I'm gonna you pour do have Jesus a designated driver. I still got to make it 12 hours. <laughs> and just you got to have what, hour, hour three or four? Yeah, four, yeah. You are, four yeah, you are a fourth oh. episode. <laughs> and we had uh, we had some Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which is super hot oh, yeah. proof as well. Yes. That's a bit hot. It is. It is. And I want to say we're going to do uh, two giveaways uh, this show, but they're not going to be the coins. What are they going to be, Scott? I think it's going to be the glasses we're, that we're using. That's right. The glasses we're using, we're going to sign those, and you can win those. Now, again, one is going to be more of a, a random kind of deal that we'll come up with, whether or not it's trivia or something else. The other one is only for our Patreon supporters. But I'm going to tell you that why we were moving between the last two shows we picked up yet another Patreon supporter. So check us out on Patreon, Scotch Test Dummies. You can support us for a dollar a month, dollar a show, or anything in between. And I believe that, no, I know that puts us at 29 supporters on Patreon. So your chances of winning something are much higher if you're a Patreon supporter. Uh, so much, there's no, your, your chances are much lower. No, of winning. Your chances your are much chances higher of, of winning. winning. Are higher? Yes. Okay, chance. Yeah, yes. your chances right. of winning are okay. higher. Yeah, no, we need to – hold on. Give me the rest of that scotch back. You've got too much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so now real quick, Thomas, tell me, um, you know, I, I know how – so it's, there's a three-tier system in the States where where the distributor has to work with, with a third party to get it to the liquor store or even to the restaurant, and you're that – are you that middle party, your company? We are, uh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. We are the supplier. So the distributor essentially buys from us. And then from there, the customer, be it retail or um, on-premise, which is bars and restaurants, which is my main focus, then purchase it from the distributor. Got it. So with the distributor in the middle, so you're working more on behalf of Tomatin since you're in the United States. Yes. So like I said, I work for Phillips Distilling, which is the company that imports it. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so we, we don't own Tomatin. We just work with them very, very closely. And so we bring in their product. It all shows up at our warehouse in Princeton, Minnesota. And then from there, uh, the distributors in the different states make their orders, and we load a truck and send it out. Now, some general questions for you, and you may not have these at your access because I know you guys just moved. But in general, um, so you're bringing everything in. So when Tomatin ships or you, it ships over to you guys in your warehouse, and then that is where you decide who it's going to go off in, in terms of a distributor, and then they market it out to their the smaller region state by state. So for the states that we have distribution in, and I'm not sure with Tomatin if we're nationwide, um, but I know that we're, we're getting more and more. We already have distributors set up. So back in Chicago, our distributor – was Breakthrough Beverage. So we already have a relationship with them. Here in California, it's Young's Market Company. So it's really if whatever they order, as long as we have enough to supply them, we will get it out to them right away. Gotcha. And then there. I know uh, Glazier, Glazier is who, who brings it in, the distributor that brings it in in Kansas. Is it? Well, then I'm sure they might do Texas as well then, because I know that Glazier is, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty big in that part of the country. And then Young's is kind of like the reigning champ out west and breakthrough is pretty big in the midwest so i'm not a hundred percent sure and then if my bosses are watching i hope i'm not saying uh, oh, you're good you're good <laughs> it's all nobody's, nobody's, nobody's watching this is nobody into the dummies um but yeah so i'm not a hundred percent sure which state has which distribution that's definitely information i could find out for you guys and get back to you at a later date 
Sure. But I know that uh, here in California, where I'm newly located, it's Young's. And then in much of the Midwest, it's Breakthrough Beverage, which used to be Wurtz. And now uh, I know that it's Glazier's down in Kansas. So Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, because that was one thing, and I know I'd have to get with Glazier's because we're always wondering, you know, like forever, we couldn't get the 14 uh, locally. We could get the 18, we could get the 12, we could get the Kaboken, and we got the, uh, and the Legacy uh, and the 15. But the 15, they discontinued, I think. Yeah. Right. And then what well, Legacy, which also goes by, I always forget the uh, – it's got the two names, one for the European market. Dualcus. Dualcus. Yeah. Dualcus is us, Legacy in Europe, we can get. Yeah, I was thrilled. Scott sent me a picture of the Tomatin 14 with the new box, uh, the new bottle. And I said, buy it. And then I owed him money for like a month. Yeah, he just paid me. <laughs> yeah, I just recently, I actually physically gave him the check in like two shows ago with, with Dave that was on. So, uh, yeah, being able to get this, because we used to have to, to drive for it. You know, I mean, it was something we couldn't uh, find anywhere in, in Wichita or anywhere in Kansas that I'd seen. Now, uh, let me say real quick, too. We recently did a threesome. What? Our, our menage a portois. Ooh, glad you explained further. My wife's watching. Yeah. We, compare, we compared blind <laughs> blind samples of the Tomatin 14, nice. the uh, Aaron port cask finish, mm -hmm. and the Balvini 21 year port wood. Mm. And the Tomatin 14 went toe to toe with the 21 year Portwood. Yeah, we did that blind at a much higher price point $220 a bottle versus $50 a bottle. Yeah, you know, we, um, we did Whiskey Fest in Chicago a few months ago, and we heard very similar things that of the, the port finished Scotch whiskey, this is uh, a crowd favorite. Oh, yeah. Um, it really does hold up to some of the, the much more aged and much higher price point whiskeys in the, the same category. Yeah, it really, really comes in good. I mean, it is very flavorful. It's one of our favorites. Now, full disclosure, I know you said you were you were moving and uh, you I think you told me you didn't you weren't even able to get a hold of this Mountain 14, but we're in full disclosure. What are you sipping along with us if you if you care to share? Oh, you know what I did actually I have a I found a Tiny little bit at the bottom of the bottle that I had, beautiful, so I was able beautiful. to pour that for me. Um, I didn't want to bring the empty bottle with me because I didn't think it would look great. But sure. <laughs> uh, but I am just sitting in the office of my apartment building with a large glass of whiskey. So cheers! You can't go wrong with that on a Saturday. Yeah. Oh, salon yeah. I don't have the uh, the Glen Cairn glasses yet, but now we did. I don't know if you had a chance. We actually. Well, Jennifer uh, in the marketing department of, Tom of Tomatin is great. She's been working with us. She actually set us up a while back, and we had two of their uh, regional sales managers. Uh, Scott and Scott. Ambassadors. Scott and Scott from Scotland joined right. us from the distillery on the live show, which was a great one. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting them in person yet. I've had many conference calls and yeah, Google Hangouts, and yeah, I feel like I called them. them pretty we call them point. Wee Scott and Big Scott. Yeah, Big Scott and Wee Scott. <laughs> I could see that. That would make sense. <laughs> That's right. And and if uh, if the Tomatin Distillery was on fire, Wee Scott saving their book that lists uh, like every single like recipe and every single I forget what he called it. What did he call it? It was awesome. Ancient know. book that just had like a log of every bottle they've ever laid down. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I haven't touched it yet, but hopefully someday I'll be able to uh, to get my hands on it and, and flip through it. But I think, I think Big Scott was grabbing like the forty year old Tomatin. I think. <laughs> yeah, or uh, the Tomatin thirty six also. That, which, that might have been it. That was it. Yeah, I think the Tomatin thirty six. He was he was going to get that out of there. Meanwhile, I'm putting out the fire. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I will lay it down and risk to put out the entire fire and save the entire warehouse. Properly rewarded, of course. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure I'm sure if you save the warehouse, we could probably find a barrel or two. For Thank you. you. That's what I'm talking about. If I I will rush in where few others dare to tread. So distiller. Let's what are you guys? Scott? I went right into a sip. I had to look. It is forty six percent and it comes off a little bit stronger. Right. But just a great buttery, creamy maltiness. Mm. A little bit of those berries of the fruit coming through. Yeah, oh, delicious. I get honey. You get honey? I get a good amount of honey. But it's a, Definitely. 
there's a sweetness there and it took me a while to identify what it was when I first started getting familiar with the product. And for me, it's honey. You bet. Yeah. I get like a honeycomb. Um, definitely that like almost like a grain sugar sweetness wrapped in there. Mm. Yeah. A little bit. Of, I get a little bit of uh, a darker fruit flavor that hangs around in the, and on the palate in the, uh, in the finish. It's beautiful. I also find a bit of pepper, which would probably say like white pepper and um, almost like a, a toffee mm, like definitely. quality to it. So it's a, it's a beautiful product. It really stands up well, uh, neat on the rocks, used in a cocktail, splash of water. However you like to drink your whiskey, this is a, a great one for you. I think it's a very versatile Scotch whiskey. I love it. Now, hey, Scott's do, looking at some comments. Two comments right quick to address. The first is Shag and Heavy D. Shag. With us. Woo, Boston, North AKA, Shore Whiskey Club. A.K.A. the North Shore Whiskey Club. And then the other one I was going to mention is Jesse Voison joined in. Ooh. Must be his first time he heard you were coin you were coin checking him the last yes. hour. Yes, hold on. Jesse Voison. He, uh, Jesse, I got it in my pocket. He used to fly F-15s. Now, this is an F-16. He also flew F-111s, but this is a coin out of South Carolina. So, yes, Jesse, I've been uh, got the coin on me. He sent us a coin along with some other stuff. Now, what did uh, Heavy D have to say real quick? Shag and Heavy D. What's up, gents? Best of luck today. Go the distance. Obvious movie reference, Solange. Wow. Did you get Go, the reference? No, I remember it. I cannot place what that is from. Mm. And I don't see, think anybody has called out the uh, trivia that's on the whiteboard. You got a trivia on the whiteboard? I didn't even know. He was Snake Plissken. Uh-huh. Huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's for, it can that's be for the you yeah, the yeah, or anybody, it. but if you got it, just say you got it. If you know what it is, you'd be like, I got it. Oh, I got it. He's got it. Look at that. <laughs> well, wait. We got to wait. Yeah, and see well, if wait. We're going to see if anybody else can figure it out. I got an idea because it's Jerry sparky. Bartlett's got the movie. Ooh. So does Jesse. But who was it? Who played him? Who you guys played should, him? There you go. LeVon Marat Meradian got it first. Kurt Russell. Oh, Snake well, sure. Plissken. Yeah. Oh, you literally meant who was Snake Plissken. Yeah. I thought it was a quote. You no. threw me. Of course it was Kurt Russell. <laughs> I thought you were saying in some movie, somebody says he, he was, was Snake Plissken. It's like a, a Guardians... Jeopardy, you know. Oh, well, I didn't know you were doing a, a question quiz. First. You I knew that. Come up with the answer. I was waiting for you to say, like, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, they said, hey, you know, he was Snake Plissken, and maybe I missed that or something. <laughs> I think that the Escape movies are two of the greatest <laughs> Oh, action movie. Yes. You know, I need to um, watch. I haven't uh, watched that for a long time. Escape from New York is beautiful. I need, yes, I need oh, yeah. to watch it. Got again. the whole patch and everything. And a Blade Runner. I think I saw it's Blade real Runner. Smoky. Well, there's a new Blade uh, Runner coming. Yeah, but the original is just on iTunes for like two ninety nine or four ninety nine. And I, I and love I'm Blade, Blade Runner. Again. I need Blade Runner is great. One. The original writings was what Philip K. Dick, and it was uh, what when you dream of robotic sheep or something. I don't remember. Sorry. I went too far there. <laughs> that really was the author's name, Philip K. Dick. He wrote some great stuff. Bruno looked at me like I was saying dirty yeah, words for no hey, reason. Hey, like, hey, why are you cursing? Why are you saying that's his name? So, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, the Tomatin 14 is, 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 is a standout in their line, if you Definitely. ask me, with the 18. And someone had commented 14 and 18 side by side on the shelf. They were similar in price. They went with the 18, uh, which is fine. It's well, still, 18's it's more good of a tea. sherry. Yeah, it's got a beautiful uh -huh. sherry finish. Yeah. It. The 14 in its own, though. And like I say, I hated to rub that in, but that was $47 it's an here. Awesome so that's, price. That was an awesome yeah. purchase. He sent me a pick. I'm like, buy it. Of course, it's because <laughs> I didn't pay him for a month, too. So, no, that's beautiful, beautiful dram. I love what Tomatin's doing, I'm telling you. Because if you're, if anybody sees even the Tomatin 12 out there, it's highly, highly affordable. And uh, I remember I'd had it before Scott, and I told Scott, hey, this has that cereal malt forwardness. And as soon as he tried it, he was like, got it. And uh, that kind of set the tone for, you know, if someone says, oh, I get that, that wet moan hay, <laughs> I get that. I get that cereal malt grain. The Tomatin 12 cemented what that flavor is for me, and it's a, it's delicious and, and, and that highly affordable. Well, if you guys are looking for another affordable one, the other one I know you mentioned earlier is the Dual Chass. Uh, yeah. The Tomatin Dual Chass, I think last I saw it on a shelf, is right around $30. Yes. Like, like well, I said, it's, 
It's Appreciate cheaper my- here. It's cheaper here. It's low twenties. It's like twenty two really? to twenty five dollars a bottle. Yeah. Walkers was uh-huh. that's our NAS. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no age statement. It's our first, I think it's our only no age statement or other than the Kubokan. But um, right. it is, like I said, for somebody who focuses mainly in cocktails and utilizing spirits and enhancing them with, you know, other ingredients, I think that dual cost is a, it's a perfect price point to be used in cocktails, be it a home bar or in a professional bar. It, it works really, really nicely. And you can do something incredibly simple with it or you can add a lot of mixers and citrus and, you know, try to go in a different direction. And if you know what you're doing, you're going to end up with a pretty nice cocktail. Beautiful. Now you started off, you told me kind of your, your history is in bartending, correct? Yeah. Bartended since I was 21. So for about eight or nine years, um, five, six days a week, everything from little neighborhood bars to really upscale uh, Michelin star restaurants and pretty much everything in between. Beautiful. Now, what's, what city were you bartending out of? Chicago. Okay, so you're right in Chicago in, in the different areas. There. I got a brother that lives in the Chicago area. So. Oh, where about you? Uh, he was, he's in uh, Elgin right now. He was in El- Burn, and then he moved to Elgin. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's just a little bit outside of the city. Um, I was in the uh, proper Chicago which is where most of the bars are. Although there are some great bars out there in the suburbs. Um, I knew he had to, he took a, uh, is there a train that goes downtown? He had to go in and work downtown. Okay. Yeah. The, the Metro, I think stops in Elgin and that's like the big commuter train out there. Um, to take you, if you live in the suburbs, it's the best way to get into town. It takes okay. you 45 minutes. Yep. That's what he was doing. Cause for a long time he was working at a bank downtown and then he moved to, uh, working with some private company later because it was only like, well, that's what he kept telling me. It's like 15 minutes away and it was drivable. And I was like, oh, okay. So now we've had a couple of people ask, wh- I mean, where in California are you at? If you want to say specifically, L- LA, right? You want like my address or no? no, no. <laughs> yeah. They are coming for that bottle well, of booze one, wherever you're at, brother. One is Jeff Pickering, and he lives out there, and he works at one of the Total Wine and Spirits. Oh, really? But uh, a couple of people just asked more specifically in California where you're at. The suburb. Los Angeles. Uh, there you so go. We are in a neighborhood of Los Angeles called Highland Park, which is just a, oh. a little bit northeast of Hollywood. So It's not the whiskey. Bruno was like, how you say well, no, Highland but if you're Park? Gonna, if you're going to live in an area... You want to live you in a whiskey? Do they have Island a Park. Do they have a tomatin? <laughs> no, like a tomatin subdivision. I, I was looking for a neighborhood called Tomat and couldn't find one, so I had to had to settle with Highland Park. No, but they it, have a division, subdivision called Isla. Hello, I'm moving oh, yeah, right exactly. now. I mean, if you're looking house shopping oh, or you just you know yeah. apartment shopping and everything's, there's one in Highland Park, everything's I mean, what whitewashed you in Isla. You get whitewashed homes. That would be yeah. Cool. You know, for some reason we were looking at the map. My eye kept drifting towards Highland Park. So yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I got to stay in Highland Park. <laughs> I really like that place in Highland Park, <laughs> honey. We got to go there. I hear good things. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's move on. You've got, so you were a bartender. You've got a, one of your favorite recipes yes. for an old-fashioned involves tomato and 14. Now, we were going to get, you sent us the recipe. It was too late. We couldn't find. You had some really specific bitters that you use, which we couldn't find. Mm-hmm. But walk, and maybe some of those watching uh, right. have their own, or they'll know what you're referencing. But walk us through your recipe of your favorite old-fashioned. And, and if you could kind of explain um, from your knowledge base what those different ingredients do to enhance or change the flavors as you kind of go through those ingredients? Of course. So, I mean, if you look at, I think one of the most common misconceptions about the old fashioned is that it's a specific recipe. <clears throat> Whenever people see old fashioned, they think it has to be bourbon and rye or bourbon or rye and Angostura bitters and sugar and water, which is not the case, to, to, or at least in my opinion, the old fashioned is more of a build. So you usually use two ounces of spirit. I've had, I mean, you always see whiskey old fashions, but I've had gin old fashions that are amazing and a vodka old fashioned, which a good friend of mine who's a really well-respected bartender put it best. And he said that the vodka old fashioned is really just an exploration of bitters and discovering what they are and what they do to a cocktail. So for this one, um, we're just kind of switching up some of the common ingredients. Instead of using bourbon or rye, we're going to use the tomato and 14 year. 
uh, about two ounces worth. Um, start with your rocks glass. If you have a large ice cube or a couple larger ice cubes, put them in there. I'm a big fan of making old fashions the old fashioned way. And you're kind of doing it all in the same glass that you're going to drink out of. Less and less, it's easier. And when you're working in high volume bars, that saves a step or two and you're able to, to get them out. So two ounces right in, into the glass over the ice instead of using Angostura bitters, which is by far the most common bitters. Everyone has seen it. It's the, the bottle with the oversized label and the bright yellow cap that is behind, I'd say, 99% of bars in the country. Uh, three dashes of uh, Bitter Cube, which is a really beautiful bitters company. Uh, they do a cherry bark vanilla bitters of that right on top and then to kind of give it a really really nice um chocolatey uh quality to kind of play off some of the toffee and the honey that we all agreed we tasted earlier just two dashes of uh it's fee brothers that makes a aztec bitter chocolate bitters um and it's really nice because it's not sweet at all it's not like like white chocolate it's a it's a bitter bitter chocolate but you still have a lot of those really strong cocoa qualities and then for the sweetening agent, uh, Demerara syrup is the most common one used in old fashions. And that's what we're going to use. So you start with raw sugar. And instead of doing a common simple syrup, which is one part sugar, one part water, you're just going to do two parts sugar, one part water, bring it to a boil, make sure it's all mixed. And then just one bar spoon. So if you have your stirring spoon, you just pour it right on, dump it right in, and give it a good stir. And I mean, that's it. That's, you're, you're done. Um, really, really simple, really beautiful drink. I like to throw a little bit of orange swath or, you know, large swath of orange, kind of express the oils over the drink. A couple of really nice Luxardo cherries and sit on your deck and... It, I mean, really, it sounds delicious. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you don't like when it's hot out. Uh, my search is on to find those bitters right. to make it, I, I, honestly. Right. So we got the recipe from you yesterday and my wife was going to the store. I said, we need raw sugar, get raw sugar. <laughs> so then I went shopping, I went running around looking for the bitters. Of course, couldn't find it. Didn't have the Luxardo cherries. So I've no. got raw sugar upstairs. That, that's a good point though. Where, I mean, where do you find those? Where, where are most of those items located? I've had best luck finding them at more higher end or like boutique-y. Uh, liquor stores. I don't think your average supermarket is going to have them. Um, but I would definitely, I don't know what you guys have in, but I know that in Chicago places like Benny's will have them. Okay. Or if you have any, any smaller kind of craft liquor stores that they should have a, a wide variety of, you know, you walk into some stores now, they have 200 different types of bitters as opposed to 10 years ago when you'd walk in, they'd have Angostura and Peixotes were the only two that were available. Right. Yeah, I knew so, there was a whole like almost bitters craft movement going on about a year or so ago. Oh, it's it's getting huge, huge. Um, bitters are such a great way to amplify an ingredient and, and really just kind of make a drink pop. Um, one of my good friends that I've worked with a few times, they uh, described bitters best to me. He said, bitters are cocktail seasoning. So the same way you would never cook a dish without a little salt and pepper, you should never make a drink without a little bit of bitters. And, and there's just like herbs and spices, there are so many different types now for every type of cocktail from, from tiki style, citrusy drinks, there are bitters that work perfectly in those to cold weather, winter drinks, there are clove bitters and, and all these other different types that just kind of make you, you know, feel like you should be sitting in your living room next to a fireplace. So oh, there Hey, you're talking my language there. <laughs> Whenever I'm drinking a heavily peated scotch, I always say it's like I've got a blanket wrapped around sitting next to a fire and there's a blizzard going on outside. Drinking a good scotch reminds me of sitting in a log cabin somewhere. Oh. And you know, hopefully there's a, a good storm going on outside, but you're safe and have a nice fire built and, mm. and a dog curled up by your toes. Like, oh. See, that is our language there. Now, Scott, you've got some more comments rolling in. You want uh, to There's been it? a lot of comments, just talk going on, everybody amongst themselves about the bitters, this and that, some talk about bennies. Now, I was going to ask you, though, Tom, what 
a lot of bartenders kind of have horror stories, if you'd say, or stuff that they hated to hold mix. On, hold on. Did you say horror stories? Horror. Oh, horror. Horror stories. I'm glad you emphasized. <laughs> a lot of bartenders have the other two. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. We're talking horror. Hey, we're 12 hours like scary, live. I scary had to pull stuff. It, in. it was it was a comedic. As a, as a bartender, what did you hate to see people order or do with their drinks? I mean, as, as an example, say I know one bartender said the guy come in and it was either Van Winkle, it was something high dollar, you know, a high dollar scotch or whiskey, and they order it in shots or they want it with Coke. I, I ran a big bar on Michigan Avenue in Chicago for a long time. Um, so because of the volume we did, we got a huge Pappy Van Winkle allocation. And one night I had a group of businessmen. I, I have no idea what industry they were in, but they made a good amount of money, clearly. And they were insisting on $150 Pappy 23 Old Fashions. Mm. I tried explaining to them, you know, like, <laughs> Like there, we have thirty other whiskeys that'll work just as nicely in your old fashioned and save you some money. But you know, they they drank a bottle of it over the course wow. of like twelve fashions. It's wow. It um, I I have mixed feelings about it. You know, if you can afford it and that's what you want to spend your money on, then God bless you. But, I agree. Now, see, I was I talking agree. to a to a whiskey bar owner here in town a while back. And someone had come in and that was, they had ordered, um, it was a high dollar scotch. It was like a, might've been a 21 year McAllen with Sprite. They wanted it. Any way they want so, it. Well, he tried explaining to him, well, you know, there's other stuff that's going to do that. For, nope. That's what they wanted. So yeah, he I, brought him, he brought him the McAllen and he brought him oh, the Sprite. He and wouldn't he, do it. He said, I'm not mixing it. He goes, if you want to go right oh, ahead. I agree. That's I like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was on a job interview. Or after I got hired, I was talking with my, my boss for the first day and I was much higher end place back in Chicago and I was sitting at the bar and this guy comes in and he orders a Jameson. It's one of the vintage expressions that they do and Coke. And I sat there and watched him drink about three of them and then tip accordingly. And I just remember thinking like, yeah, I'll, I'll work here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> this guy. This guy's gonna come in and drink fifty dollar whiskey and cokes. All right, cool. Um, right. So. See, I'm of the distinct impression. Now that is not how I would enjoy it, so I agree with you on that. But I'm also a firm, firm believer that you drink your whiskey any way you want. If you pay for it, I might cringe as I see it because that's not how I would drink it. But especially if I was a bartender, I would have said, "That's how you want it." Yes, here it is. I would have made it for you. So I think there's a thing that started happening a few years ago, and it was right when the whole craft cocktail uh, craze started becoming more and more popular, which is a lot of bartenders almost got pretentious about what they would and would not make for people, and people would judge everyone based off of what they were drinking, and I would be the first to admit I was part of that category for a long time. I would make fun of people for if I thought they were drinking a stupid drink or you know, drinking a Bloody Mary at night, stuff like that. And then over the years, I just realized, like, let people drink what they want to drink. Who cares? You're not drinking it. Mm -hmm. like, you're not paying for it. If that's what this person wants, let them have it. Make it for them and make it the best way you can. There you go. But having said that, Pappy 23 Old Fashions hurt my soul. Yeah, a little. yeah I would but, be a little bit like, oh. Glenn, but, Coda, Glenn Coda has what? asked, uh, hey, dummies, what's the highest price for a whiskey you paid in a bar? I can tell you the highest I paid was $22. Ooh, mine was 18 or 19 Yeah, I don't even remember. It wasn't that um, No wait, the, the on, best dram. On, but that, was, on that note, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask the bartending expert. I, I, I've had places come and throw a ton of ice in it, so I said, hey, I want yeah. it neat. Yeah. And then they showed up with a double pour, and I was like – Huh. And then they charge you more. They charge $26. You ordered, it, you ordered it neat. Yeah. And I said, I'm confused. That was a great pour, but what it, and she said, Oh, you ordered it neat. And I'm like, that just means no ice. The gal serving it was confused, but the bartender said, that's what that is. Can you answer some of that? Cause I've seen that happen. I've had that happen to me. I think that's common. Um, I think that when you go to a bar, the standard pour is usually between 1.25 and 1.5 ounces. Mm -hmm. Where if you order a neat, it's usually two ounces or above. 
So you are usually getting a little bit more. The bars that I ran, we would never double. The only way I'm going to charge you double the price is if you order a double. And then I am giving you literally twice as much alcohol. But if you wanted a neat, we usually charge you 3 to $4 more on, on a 12 or $15 order of whiskey. But I've, I've never doubled it for a neat pour. I've heard stories of that happening. I, I don't think it should. I think that's people yeah. trying to kind of take advantage of you a little bit. Right. You know? Mine wasn't quite doubled, but it, so so if I wanted just that single drink, I should. I, someone else told me. I think someone on here said, "What are your drink and say ice on the side or something?" I think is what they said. Yeah, um, either do that or just say single pour, no ice. I think that a lot of bartenders will automatically give you a bigger pour though if you order a neat and then charge you accordingly. Gotcha. Okay. But just being charged a lot. A couple comments that come in based on that Hoyt Hempel, Hemp Hill paid $50 for a 40 year old Ooh, Milburn. Wow. Roy Roy has paid $250 for a McAllen M. Wow. There you go. And Eric Gilbert has paid $350 for a 30 year Dalmore. Put that in a Coke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Diet Coke, too, man. You got to save the calories. I think they're making Diet Cherry Coke now. So you can. Yeah, really does. Just go for it. Yeah, really. That's like a mixologist dream right there. Uh, that's it. No, I mean, it's one of the great things about being a bartender is, you know, all of my friends are bartenders. We all work in, in different bars and have a lot of whiskey. So I've been fortunate that I've been able to try, you know, some of the best, if not the best whiskeys in the world for, for a pretty affordable price to say. Yeah, so beautiful. You guys, yeah, if the, uh, the police force doesn't work out for you, you guys ever want to a I chance try. to, <laughs> to go try, try some whiskey on discount. It's a great way to do it. That would right. be the way to do it. Hold on. We got to do we some got, giveaways. We got a here. couple giveaways to do. We're going to sign these glasses. One is going to the people that's watching. The people. That's One the is going to people. Patreon. And Patreon keeps growing. I'm checking to see if Patreon's grown again. So for the people that are watching, we're going to ask... We had Scott and Scott from Tomatin Distillery on. We looked at a slightly peated Tomatin. Which one was it? Ooh, I know the answer to that one. First one to comment gets the glass. Am I allowed to answer? No. <laughs> you would definitely know. So, all right, we're coming in. Now, signing a glass, this Fer means they can... Feral Barrel. What? Got it. Feral, feral Barrel. barrel. Good job. Feral Barrel, uh, give us your email address. We'll contact you for your address. Woo! Now, all right, we're still at 29 patrons, which is phenomenal. Thank you, one and all. Again, you can go to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. We're Scotch Test Dummies there, just like the webpage. Um, you can support us for a dollar a month, dollar show, whatever you want to do. But we're still at 29. Now, I can remember who's won three... 15 and 26. 26. So we're going to do a random number between 1 and 29. Let me ask Siri. Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 29. It's one. 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 Hello. Wow. Thank you, Siri. <laughs> there we go. Siri went with one. I don't know. Somehow that seems like more. I rare. know who Patreon number one is. Wow. So do I because he, he found our, us. Our very first Patreon supporter, Mark Pixler. Mark Pixler, before we had even loaded a single video. We were, we were going to bring him up at some point today That's, and just we were. thank him for being the first Patreon supporter that we had. He could truly type first if he wanted to, and it would be an accurate statement. That happens in our comments a lot. Now, what minute? We're at 340. Um, we're at 340. So, Thomas, give us, uh, you know, plug whatever you want, uh, the business, to Matin, whatever yourself, whatever you wish. Go ahead and uh, speak freely. Well, I think one of the things that we're the most proud of as a company right now is uh, to Matin 36 and the incredible success that we had in San Francisco with it earlier in the year. Um, let me see if I can bring up what we got. I'm hydrating while you're while you're doing that. I got to keep up the hydration. Twelve hours of boom, baby. <laughs> I I respect it. 
Yes. <laughs> just watching you guys. I'm going to go home and take a nap after this. Um, but, <laughs> we are one third of the way yeah. through. You can well, dive down on the boom. Uh, Keep drinking that water. But, go ahead, um, Tom. Was Tom done talking? No, no, go ahead, Tom. You found that. Go ahead. So, yeah, uh, what we are both thrilled, or the whole company is thrilled about right now is what we've been doing with Tomatin 36. Uh, double gold of 2017 in San Francisco. Best distiller, single malt age, 20 or more years. Best single malt scotch, best scotch. And then took home gold in 2016. And then a 96.5 out of 100 in Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little pricey, but it is a beautiful whiskey. And if you're ever able to, to get your hands on it, give it a try. Now, I got to ask you, now this is just for the fans and for us, but if you ever send out uh, samples to reviewers, we would love to get a sample and we'd either have you back on the show or if you wanted, we could do it on one of our pre recorded shows. Well, but there, keep us in mind. There's a caveat. What? If it's that 36 year, we need the whole bottle. Oh, now oh, he's yeah. too far. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even have a whole bottle. So <laughs> keep us in mind on a sample for that. We're, hey, we're going over reviews. your head to Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend that. Just <laughs> let, let her be the bearer of bad news on that one. Oh, no, that's brutal. All right, now we got to go to Wee no. Scott. <laughs> yeah, we, we do have some samples, and if possible, I'd love to get some out to you guys to taste and uh, come back on the show for a few minutes and talk about it sometime in the future. That'd be, be a lot of fun. Beautiful. Yeah. It would be great. That'd be great. We hey, got about three minutes left. What do you got, Scott? Where is we do have you can go for a limited time. Oh, yeah. We're sporting them on and off. We got special t shirts that were made up right. for the 12 hours of boom. I survived. Um, I'm going to put mine on next, probably. Uh, go to scotchtestdummies.com to the shop. Uh, they'll mm -hmm. probably be available for a week or two. Yeah. We haven't decided yet. Yep. It's going to be just time. a limited time, and then right. they'll be taken down. Yep. So you can get on there. You can pick um, the color. It doesn't have to be black. You can pick the color. You can do it the baseball we, style. We're also kind of um, – we had we talked up a couple times about getting a new camcorder. Right. We had a, a, a good donation that came in for us to buy a new camcorder. Uh, anybody else watching, if you want to donate 5 or $10, sure. uh, we're getting ready to order it. We'll take it. Um, and that's scotchtestdummies at gmail.com on PayPal. You can just make now, a donation. Now, is this the kind to. of camera that could fit in a purse? No, this is a, this is a high-definition <laughs> so professional the one, camcorder. The one I was looking at, we're referencing back to older live shows already. See, it's all meta. It's all meta. <laughs> I know a few people have already commented that they've, they've already ordered their 12 Hours of Boom t-shirt. Sweet. Get it. That'll be one. Um, Where are we at? See, we got, we got we one the, more minute. We did the giveaways. We got both. We got Patreon. Glasses are out. It's been a I just to ask, who is the Boba Fett fan? Ooh, both of us, we but really are. me a lot. Love the Fett. <laughs> Love the that's, Fett. That's one of the deals with the dummies. We get You get a little dose of Star Wars that's right. A lot of Star Wars. And the Denver Broncos. A little both bit of Broncos. Denver Broncos fans. That's right. Who's and your football? Oh, and it's a... I hate saying it, but I'm a Bears fan. No, hey, say it right Bears. there. Come on. You sound like a Chief fan now. They're like, ah, the Chiefs. Ah. Uh, yeah. Now, you got to be. You're from Chicago. I figured my brother is like Denver, then the Bears. We've had a rough run. We've had a rough go of it. But, you know, always be a Bears fan. That's it. So. That's it. Cool. All right. I think we're All there. Right. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being able to come on and talk to you about uh, Tomatin and some cocktails. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, good luck with the next eight hours. That's there right. you go. Thanks, <laughs> Thomas. Love having you on the show. And we're going to scotch it, you scotch gods. Salancha. See you guys. All, All right. right. See you later, Thank man. You Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.